Why the little Frenchman wears his hand in a sling, Edgar Allan Poe. It's on my visiting cards sure enough, and it's them that's all o pink satin paper, that any gentleman that plays is may bail the inferous thin words, Sir Pathricker Grandison, Baronet, 39 Southampton Row, Russell Square, Parish O' Bloomsbury. And should ye be wanting to discover who is the pink of politeness quite, and the leader of the hot tun in the whole city o' lone and why it's just meself. And fact that same is no wonder at all at all, so be pleased to stop curling your nose, for every inch o' the six weeks that I've been a gentleman, and left off with the bog throthing to take up with the baronessy, it's Pathrick that's been living like a holy emperor, and getting the education and the graces. Och! And wouldn't it be a blessed thing for your spirits if ye could lay your two peepers gist, upon Sir Pathrick or Grandison, baronet, when he is already tryst for the hopperer, or stepping into the brisky for the drive into the Hyde Park? But it's the elegant big figure that I have, eh, for the raisin o' which all the ladies fall in love with me. Isn't it my own sweet sylph now that'll measure six foot, and the three inches more nor that, in me stockings? And that am excadingly well proportioned all over to match. And it is really more than three foot and a bit that there is, anyhow, of the little Ferna Frankman the lives just over the way, and that's a ogling and a goggling the whole day, and bad luck to him, at the putty witty Miss Thress Trackle that's my own next door neighbour, God bless her, and a most particular friend and acquaintance. You pecave the little spelpeen is summit down in the mouth, and wears his lift hand in a sling, and it's for that same thing, by your lave, that I'm going to give you the good raisin. The truth of the whole matter is just simple enough, for the very first day that I come from Connaught, and showed my sweet little sylph in the strait to the widdy, who was looking through the windy, it was a gone case elthage there with the heart o' the purty mistress trackle. I pecaved it, ye see, all at once, and no mistake, and that's God's truth. First of all it was up with the windy in a jiffy, and thin she threw open her two peepers to the utmost, and thin it was a little gold spyglass that she clapped tight to one o' them and devil may burn me if it didn't speak to me as plain as a peeper could speak, and says it, through the spyglass, ok. The tip o' the morning to ye, Sir Pathrick o' Grandison, Baronet, Mavonine, and it's an eight gentleman that ye are, sure enough, and it's meself and me fortin just that'll be at ye as our vice, dear, any time o' day at all at all for the asking. And it's not meself ye would have to be bait in the politeness. So I made her a bow that worth heart broken your heart altered to that abailed, and thin I pulled off me hat with a flourish, and thin I winked at her heart with both eyes, as much as to say, true for you, you're a sweet little cratcher, Mrs. Trackle, me darlint, and I wish I may be drowned dead in a bog, if it's not Meslf, Sir Pathrick o' Grandison, Baronet, that'll make a whole bushel o' love to your ladyship, in the twinkling o' the eye of a London Derry purratty. And it was the next morning, sure. Just as I was making up me mind whether it wouldn't be the polite thing to sign a bit o' oh, right into the widdy by way of a love letter, when up come the delivery servant wid an elegant card, and he told me that the name on it, for I neither could read the copperplate printin' on account of being lift-handed, was all about Mouncy ear, the count, a goose, look a easy, mate de dawns, and that the whole of the devilish lingo was the spelpeeny long name of the little old Ferner Frankman as lived over the way, and just with that in come the little William himself, and then he made me a broth of a bow and thin he said he had only taken the liberty of doing me the honour of a giving me a call, and thin he went on to palaver at a great rate, and devil the bit did I comprehend what he would be after the tilling me at all at all, excepting and saving that he said pully woo, woolly woo, and told me, among a bushel o' lies, bad luck to him, that he was mad for the love o' my widdy Miss Thress Trackle, and that my widdy Mrs. Trackle had a punchin' for him. At the hearing of this, ye may swear, though, I was as mad as a grasshopper, but I remembered that I was Sir Pathrick o' Grandison, baronet, and that it wasn't Alphage the gentle to let the anger get the upper hand o' the politeness, so I made light o' the matter and kept dark, and got quite sociable with the little chap, and after a while what did he do but ask me to go with him to the widdies, saying he would give me the fashionable introduction to her ladyship, is it the ye are? said I thin to Meslf, and it's through for you, Patrick, that ye're the fortunatest mortal in life. We'll soon see now whether it's your sweet sylph, or whether it's little Mount's e ear mate at dawns that Miss Thress Trackle is head and ears in the love wid, wid that we went off to the widdies, next door, and ye may well say it was an elegant place, so it was. There was a carpet all over the floor, and in one corner there was a forty penny and a Jew's harp and the devil knows what else, and in another corner was a Sophie, the beautifulest thing in all natter, and sitting on a Sophie, sure enough, there was the sweet little angel, Miss Thress Trackle. The tip o' the morning to ye, says I, Mrs. Trackle and thin I made such an elegant obeisance that it worth her quite alphage that bewildered the brain o' oh ye. Wally-woo, pully-woo, 
plump in the mud, says the little foreigner Frinkman, and sure Mrs. Trackle, says he, that he did, isn't this gentleman here just as reverence Sir Pathricker Grandison, baronet, and isn't he Althagether and entirely the most particular friend and acquaintance that I have in the whole world? And wid that the widdy, she gets up from the sofa, and makes the sweetest curthchy nor ever was seen, and thin down she sits like an angel, and thin, by the powers, it was that little spelpeen mounts e ear made her adorns that plumped his silf right down by the right side of her. Ochern. I expected the two eyes o me would ha come out of my head on the spot, I was so disparate mad. How Iver? Bait who? Says I, after a while. Is it the ear, mounts e ear made her adorns? And so down I plumped on the left side of her ladyship, to be even with a willin. Botheration. It would ha done your heart good to pecave the elegant double wink that I gived her just thin right in the face with both eyes, but the little old Frinkman he neither begin to suspect me at all at all, and disparate hard it was he made the love to her ladyship. Wooly woo, says he, pully woo, says he, plump in the mud, says he, that's all to no use, mounts e ear frog, mavonine, thinks I, and I talked as hard and as fast as I could all the while, and throth it was Mesloff just that devoted her ladyship completely and entirely, by reason of the elegant conversation that I kept up with her all about the dear bogs of Connaught. And by and by she gave me such a sweet smile, from one end of her mouth to the other, that it made me as bold as a pig, and I just took hold of the end of her little finger in the most delicatest manner in that her, looking at her all the while out o' the whites of my eyes. And then only pecave the cuteness of the sweet angel, for no sooner did she observe that I was after the squeezing of her flipper, than she up with it in a jiffy, and put it away behind her back. Just as much as to say, now thin, Sir Pathricker Grandison, there's a bit of chance for ye, Mavonine, for it's not altogether the gentle thing to be after the squeezing of my flipper right full in the sight of that little fur in a frinkman, mounts e ear mate at ye dawns. Wid that I gift her a big wink just to say, lit Sir Pathrick alone for the like so them thricks, and thin I went a eyes to work, and you'd have died with the devotion to bathe how cleverly I slipped my right arm between the back o' the sophie, and the back of her ladyship, and there, sure enough, I found a sweet little flipper all awaiting to say, the tip o' the morning to ye, Sir Pathricker Grandison, Baronet. And wasn't it Meslf, sure, that just gifted the last little bit of a squeeze in the world, all in the way of a commencement, and not to be too rough with her ladyship? And och, botheration, wasn't it the gentlest and delicatest of all the little squeezes that I got in return? Blood and thunder, Sir Pathrick, Mavonine, thinks I to Meslf, fet it's just the mother's son of you and nobody else at all at all, that's the handsomest and the fortunatest young bog throtter that ever come out of Connaught. And with that I gave the flipper a big squeeze, and a big squeeze it was, by the powers, that her ladyship gave to me back. But it would ha split the seven sides of you with the laugh into bailed, just then all at once, the consated behaviour of Mounsey ear made at ye dawns. The like so sitch a jabbering, and a smirking, and a parley wooing as he beginned with her ladyship, neither was known before upon earth and devil may burn me if it wasn't me own very two peepers that cotched him tipping her the wink out of one eye. Och, kern. If it wasn't Meslf then that was mad as a kilkenny cat I should like to be told who it was. Let me inform you, mounds e ear mate de dawns, said I, as polite as I've ye seed, that it's not the gentle thing at all at all, and not for the like so you anyhow, to be after the ogling and a goggling at her ladyship in that fashion, and just with that such another squeeze as it was I gift her flipper, all as much as to say, isn't it Sir Pathrick now, my jewel, that'll be able to the protecting o' oh you, my darlint? And then there comed another squeeze back, all by way of the answer. Through for you, Sir Pathrick, it said as plain as I've a squeeze said in the world, through for you, Sir Pathrick, Mavonine, and it's a proper nate gentleman ya yeah, that's God's truth, and with that she opened her two beautiful peepers till I believe they would ha come out of her head althagether and entirely, and she looked first as mad as a cat at Mount's e ear frog, and thin as smiling as all out o' doors at Meslf. Thin, says he, the William, Ockhern. And a wally woo, pully woo, and then with that he shoved up his two shoulders till the devil the bit of his head was to be disguised, and then he let down the two corners of his purr at trap, and thin not a hayporth more of a satisfaction could I get out o' the spalpeen. Believe me, my jewel, it was Sir Pathrick that was unreasonable mad thin and the more by token that the Frinkman kept and with his winking at the widdy, and the widdy she kept and with the squeezing of my flipper, as much as to say, at him again, Sir Pathricker Grandison, Mavonine, so I just ripped out with a big oath, and says I, ye little spalpeeny frog of a bog throtting son of a bloody noun, and just thin what do ye think it was that her ladyship did? Troth she jumped up from the sofa as if she was bit, 
and made off through the door, while I turned my head round after her, in a complete bewilderment and botheration, and followed her with me two peepers. Yupakeva I had a reason of my own for knowing that she couldn't get down the stairs Alphajiva and entirely, for I knew very well that I had hold of her hand, for the devil the bit had I either let it go. And says I, isn't it the last little bit of a mistake in the world that you've been after the making, your ladyship? Come back now, that's a darlint, and I'll give you your flipper. But off she went down the stairs like a shot, and then I turned round to the little French foreigner. Ockhorn. If it wasn't his spalpeeny little paw that I held of in my own way then thin it wasn't that's all, and maybe it wasn't Meself that just died then outright with the laughing, to behold the little chap when he found out that it wasn't the widdy at all at all that he had held of all the time, but only Sir Parthrick Grandison. Bill Devil himself neither beheld such a long face as he patten. As for Sir Parthrick Grandison, Baronet, it wasn't for the likes of his reverence to be after the minding of a thriffle of a mistake. You may just say, though, for it's God's thruth that afore I left her of the flipper of the spalpeen, which was not till our fair ladyship's footman had kicked us both down the stairs, I gifted such a nate little broth of a squeeze as made it all up into raspberry jam, wooly woo, says he, pully woo, says he caught tam, and that's just the thruth of the reason why he wears his lift hand in a sling, Littleton Barry, 